Hi, welcome back to my channel, Beautiful Minutia. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany, and today I wanted to talk to you about some five-star predictions. This year, I'm doing five-star predictions a little bit differently than I have in the previous years where I made a five-star predictions list for the entire year. Instead, what I'm doing is making much smaller quarterly predictions, which is making it a lot more manageable for me to get to these books and I don't forget about them. <laughs> As opposed to ones that were annual, sometimes I get towards the end of the year and be like, oh yeah, I made that TBR and I still haven't gotten to a lot of those books. So I've been doing it quarterly. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about the three books that I predicted would be five stars that I read in the first quarter of 2023. And then I'm going to make some predictions for the second quarter. So one of the books that I predicted would be five stars is Six of Crows by Lee Bartugo. And I predicted this would be five stars because this is kind of in adjacent duology. It's the first book in a duology to the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which I read probably close to two years ago and really enjoyed, especially because of kind of the Russian influence and the magic system. And I really liked it a lot. And so everyone had told me that Six of Crows was better. So I fully anticipated giving this five stars. I did really enjoy this book, but it didn't quite hit the five star mark for me, even though it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. In this, we're basically following kind of this group of ragtag kids who are essentially kind of like con artists and it kind of has like an Oliver Twist feel to it in that kind of way. And it also really reminds me of the lies of Locke Lamora, but mostly less dark. <laughs> there are a couple of scenes that were more graphic violently than I thought they would be for a YA, but I did really enjoy this. I enjoyed the camaraderie. There were things about it that I didn't love. I felt like every single character had to be paired with another character romantically, which is just something that happens in YA. They can't just let people be friends or let people go about their lives. There always has to be a romance. And that's not necessarily always true in adult books, but I mean, I do see it a lot in adult books too. And I'm, I tend to be like much more critical of romance and stories than other components, unfortunately, sometimes. So I just found it kind of annoying that every single one of the main characters pretty much was just paired off neatly. And I kind of wish that hadn't been that way. Also, I ha had a lot of people tell me that this probably didn't need to be a duology and that they would have been fine with it stopping after book one and having read book one. I agree. They added something at the end that would make it so there needed to be a sequel. And if they hadn't put that at the end, I don't think we would have needed one. Will I go on to read the next book? Maybe. I really enjoyed Six of Crows and I feel like I would reread it at some point but I don't know whether or not I care enough about the sequel. <laughs> so I gave this one four stars. The other fantasy that I predicted would be five stars is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is book two in the Farseer trilogy. Book one of the Farseer trilogy was Assassin's Apprentice, which was my number one book of last year. So of course I was like, Royal Assassin is for sure gonna be five stars. And for sure, it was. <laughs> I loved this book so much. Every second of it, I felt like I just was totally immersed in it. I think I read this book in like a week-ish. And lately, my reading speed has not been phenomenal. This book is about 700 pages. And so for me to have completed this entire book in that amount of time, I feel like it's pretty good for the amount of reading I've been getting done lately. I just loved this. I love Robin Hobb's writing. I love the characters of this world. I love the relationships that were developed in the first book and now are continuing. The characters that we are learning more about. Fitz's abilities that we're learning more about. Also, this wolf. I love the wolf. I'll just say that. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> I don't want to be spoilery because this is book two in a trilogy. So if you haven't read Assassin's Apprentice, I really don't want to spoil you. But we're just continuing the journey of Fitz. And yeah, I have one more book left in this trilogy. So the last book that I predicted would be five stars was Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. This is book two in the Barsetshire Chronicles. I read The Warden in October last year and I enjoyed it. 
wasn't blown away by it, but I did like some of the subtle humor and some of his kind of commentary on life and society. But so many people had told me that Barchester Towers just gets better and better, that the series gets better, and that I've actually had quite a few people tell me that Barchester Towers is their favorite out of the Barsetshire Chronicles. So I went in with very high expectations. And at first, those expectations were met. It's very funny. We're actually picking up with a lot of the same characters from The Warden. We have Mr. Harding. We have his daughter, Eleanor, his other daughter, Dr. Grantley. Like, there are a lot of people that carry over between those two books. But there were a lot of things that I ended up not really enjoying about it. I found most of the characters to be really, really irritable by about halfway through the book and the exception to that I think was Mr. Harding. <laughs> I still loved him. I, that man can do no wrong for me. He's just a sweet old man and I just love his personality and his gentle yet strong spirit. Like I just love Mr. Harding so much. But over time the book just kind of felt at, long to me I guess and I read this alternating between my Kindle and then an audiobook. I felt like the audiobook was really well done, but it really just, I, it just felt long to me. And maybe it was just that I wasn't really in the mood for it at a certain point, or I don't know. I, I was enjoying it at the beginning, so I don't know what shifted for me, but something did. And it's more than twice as long as The Warden, and I feel like I would have liked it better if it had been around the same length because I think that length worked better for me with Trollope's writing because it just started feeling kind of repetitive to me and like the characters going in the same motions and doing the same kinds of things. Unfortunately, I wish it didn't feel that way, but I still thought it was funny. I still enjoyed parts of it. I liked parts of the ending. Other parts of the ending just felt really, I don't, I don't know, not fulfilling to me unfortunately and so I ended up giving this one I think it was between three and a half and four stars I'm pretty sure I rounded up to four stars on Goodreads but I didn't really end up liking it that much more than The Warden which is unfortunate because I really had hoped that I was going to like it more and I didn't. I do own the rest of the series I think it's a five or a six book series and I own I think the rest of them. <laughs> so I will probably continue on with this at some point, but I'm finding that Anthony Trollope's writing doesn't really have like the depth of characterization or connection that I'm really looking for. It's more like a light fun read, but I really do love his sense of humor. And I love especially when he kind of breaks the fourth wall and starts talking to his audience about the way that he's writing his characters or about society as a whole and things like that. I really loved that, but I was really disappointed that it wasn't five stars. Okay, now I'm going to make some predictions for the next quarter and I was hoping to film this video earlier than I am, but I've actually been very sick. And so I am filming it later in April and one of these books I, I haven't finished, but I am currently reading and I'm more than halfway through, but I chose this list beforehand. So know that going in, <laughs> that even though I'm reading one of the books right now, I'm keeping it on the list regardless of how I feel about it at this current point. I didn't put it on here because I'm super enjoying it and I'm also like not taking it off. If I'm not enjoying it, I went with my original list. So the book that I'm actually referring to for that is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two of the Stormlight Archive and uh, she's a chunk. She's big. <laughs> I read Way of Kings last summer and I did a reading vlog for it and I'm doing a reading vlog for this one as well as I'm going throughout with my thoughts and I loved Way of Kings. It was confusing to me and I felt really lost for a while in it, but I trusted Brandon Sanderson to somehow make this massive world make sense. And he totally did. He's such a masterful writer. So most people have told me that Words of Radiance is their favorite book in the Stormlight Archive. So far, there's only four books out right now. There will be 10. So it's going to be a very, very big series. But 
Most people say that Words of Radiance is their favorite. That's the general consensus. I'm sure that there are exceptions. I know that there are. There are a couple of people who have told me there are exceptions. But overall, most people say that this is their favorite of the series. So I felt like this needed to be here. I feel like all of Stormlight Archive is going to be five stars for me, but I really feel like this one is going to be like the top of the top for me. Continuing on the fantasy train, is it cheating? <laughs> to say that another Robin Hobb book is going to be a five star because so far every book in the Farsia trilogy has just been fantastic for me. I just told you about book two and I am so sad that I waited so long in between Assassin's Apprentice and Royal Assassin. So I wanted Assassin's Quest to come as soon after as it could. And I was gonna maybe try to read it the next month, but because this is a buddy read, I didn't want to do that. So I didn't want to try to read both of these at the same time. I figured one month for this 1100 page book is good. That's what we're gonna do. Um, and not try to insert another one in there at the same time. So yeah, so Royal Assassin, I mean, Assassin's Quest. <laughs> I think this will be five stars. This is the conclusion of the first trilogy, but then we're going on and there's more with the characters in this. I am really interested because I hope that this isn't spoilery. I'm not gonna say anything about the plot, but I mean, there's a dragon on the cover and there hasn't been any dragons in the books yet. So I'm really interested how that's gonna be introduced, where that's gonna be. I don't know anything about that. I'm super super interested so be continuing Fitz's journey hopefully in May but yeah I think that this one is also going to be five stars I just jive with Robin Hobbs writing so much and then I have two classics that I'm going to put on here so maybe this is ambitious to put four books <laughs> on this list but uh three of these four books are buddy reads so I think that there's a good chance well there's a definite chance and I'm going to get to all of these within the quarter. So uh, the next one that I think will be five stars is Kill Many of the Orchard by Ellen Montgomery. You may have seen my announcement video for Ellen Montgomery May, a whole month of May that we are going to be celebrating Ellen Montgomery and her amazing writing. And this is the book that we chose for the group read because it's a standalone and it's not a very well-known standalone. In fact, out of all of us hosts that are hosting Ellen Montgomery May, only one of us has read it and I'm not the one, so I have not read it. So um, I've had some people tell me since that announcement that Kilmany is not one of their favorites that have read it, and then I had someone tell me that it is one of their favorites. So I think that there's a good chance that, that maybe this might be risky to put this as a five star, but I really love Ellen Montgomery's writing, so I'm willing to put it on here. So my other classic is also kind of risky. <laughs> Oh, because I don't really know if it'll be five stars. I'm basing it on what other people have said, but that's Don Quixote. And this is a book that I think scares a lot of people because of its length. Although in this edition, it doesn't look nearly as scary, but it is still around a thousand pages in this edition and the print is tiny. So I know I'll probably feel the length a bit, but I've had a lot of people tell me it doesn't feel as long as it looks and also that it's super funny, like way funnier than they were expecting it to be and way better than they were expecting it to be. So I have really high expectations going into Don Quixote and I'm not really scared to read it at all. There are some classics that intimidate me a bit. <laughs> War and Peace was one, Les Mis was one, Moby Dick is one. There were some that I have that are like their reputation makes me a little nervous but Don Quixote does not especially because all the people I know who have read this semi recently have actually really really enjoyed it and so I'm really looking forward to this one and I think that I'm gonna give it five stars but again it feels risky having never read anything by him before I'm only going off of what other people have told me so I'm posting this video just a little bit differently than I had originally planned because originally I was planning on doing one video where I wrapped up my five star predictions for the first quarter and then a second video where I made my predictions for the second quarter. But I just kind of decided to do it all together because I'm kind of a little bit behind in my posting schedule anyway, just because I had an extra video on there that I wasn't planning on and you know, random things, stuff happens. So next quarter this may look different i may do one video that is just me 
wrapping up the predictions I had and then another one predicting it, especially because I have four books that are on my prediction for this quarter. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted on how that goes. If you have a preference one way or another, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And also if you have read any of the books that I read or any of the books that are on my predictions for this next quarter, I'd love to know what you thought of them. Did you absolutely love them? Were they disappointments? Were they right where you thought it was gonna be? I'm just kind of interested because I feel like my predictions were not like top notch, like right on the money for the first quarter, but that's okay. I guess it makes it a little bit more interesting when five star predictions don't end up quite being the top of the line books that you were hoping they would be. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me. Now I will see you again next time. Thank you.